this is obviously a first for both of you guys, so can you just walk us through what this week has been like so far in preparation and just your emotions going into the biggest game that you guys have played in and coached in? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, look, look there's, there's no doubt that the game means a little bit more, but it's important that we, we keep our emotions in check and, and all the, the rigmarole that goes with that, I think, and just treat it as another game. Uh, we've done that over the last number of weeks, and it's, it's important that we continue to do that as we move forward. Yeah, for me, it's definitely exciting. Uh, there is a buzz you know, around this last week of the season. Uh, but, but like like Jimbo said, you know, once you get out on the field, it's just another training session, you know, another, another practice for the week, and, and we got to prep the best way we can. Um, and that'll hopefully set us up for success on Saturday. Coach, last week you said this team doesn't just want to win, but they'll do anything to win. How did you see that play out on Saturday? Uh, I think that was evident. Uh, I don't think it was our best performance in possession. Uh, I thought we were quite poor at times, to be honest. Uh, but we defended, uh, did really well, put our bodies on the line, fought for each other. Uh, and ultimately, that's what I mean by they, they want to win, yes, but but they're willing to do anything to win, and, and they showed that the other night. And how about for you, Matt? How, did you, how do you feel like this team will do anything to get on the position this Yeah, I, th I think uh, we talk about character a lot. It's one of the things that maybe we have been lacking overall in the past. And, uh, yeah, I mean, not going to lie, Vegas came and gave it to us pretty well on the weekend. You know, they had a lot of possession. We were defending quite a bit. But uh, there's this feeling within the group that we weren't going to concede. You know, Chris stood on his head and goal a couple of times, blocking shots. And he took one in the head. You know, people putting their bodies on the line. And that's something that you need to win championships. And, yeah, it might be a little lucky in moments like that. But more often than not, you make your luck like creating a goal on a set piece. Um, so, yeah, like, we're willing to put our bodies on the line and, and do anything to try to win. Matt, looking back at 2022, you guys losing in the Western Finals in San Antonio to now making history already and getting to play at home. Just how excited does that make you feel? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, it's all kind of happened so fast, you know, from the last game of the season where we could have ended up in fifth or second place to now hosting a USL final. So it's very exciting uh, and to be able to do it at home in front of, you know, 9,000 fans is going to be incredible, you know, have our families in town um, and things like that. So it's a very exciting moment, but we're trying to, to stay even keel for the week and, you know, uh, save the celebrations for after the game. And then going off of that, just how excited, you know, the fan base that you guys have had, how much they meant to you guys throughout this process. Yeah, I mean, they're everything, you know, actually walking out this past uh, game for the fi the Western final, it was actually probably the pact I've seen it here, well, the most pact I've seen it here in a couple of years being here, which was incredible. And I expect Saturday to be, you know, no different. Um, and they're huge for us. I mean, our trailhead section, you know, the fans we see in, the, in every seat, you know, every game, it's incredible. Um, so, so we're very fortunate. So kind of going off that even more, do, you know, because we got a situation where other teams had to lose and things had to set up for this to happen. Does it kind of just feel like things kind of fell into place for you guys? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, you, you need a little luck sometimes to win a championship, um, as we see every year. But uh, we try to control our own controllables. You know, we have to go out and focus on ourselves, and, and we still had to go and win these games. So we couldn't couldn't focus on, when I, on what everyone else was doing. Um, and to our luck, you know, it ended up here. And for both of you, you know, we only have, you know, one pro team out here. And for you guys to bring something so special to this city, something we haven't seen before, what, what does it mean to you that th this city is going to have a chance to cheer you on and, and revel in this moment? Yeah, I, th I think I think we saw that last weekend. Uh, I, th I think we saw uh, probably to, to echo Matt's comments that like it, it was the most energy we felt in the building. Obviously, look, it's it's a it's a conference final, it's a championship semi final. So there's more energy in the building from the fans. And we expect that to be a little bit more this weekend, especially with the earlier kickoff and, and with more people in the building. So we're, we're anticipating the energy to be off the wall. Uh, but, but ultimately, we, we want to be able to give back at times. Yeah, things have, we've had to control what, what we can control. And we've done that by winning the games that have been put in front of us and things have fallen in our favour. But the fans that pay the money to come out and watch us every weekend, they're owed this. They're owed a, a really important day out on Saturday that, that they can come and help cheer us on, but we have to continue to give back to them. Uh, not much to add, honestly, but I think personally for me, this is now feels like a second home. Uh, you know, coming out here, being here for four years now, you know, you, you bring your wives, your, your families out here um, and things like that. And, you know, we see it in the beginning of the season with season ticket members and throughout the whole season, uh, you know, a lot of people really care about the switchbacks. And, you know, <laughs> To have this down this stadium downtown and to have fans coming, it, it's incredible. And it's honestly a lot of the reason why we play. So I think on that, I know you guys weren't necessarily 
good for all of us. Right? You know, when I first got here six years ago, you know, they're playing right next to where the guys are playing over there, the old wider field, and, and you know, with the pandemic, and, and you know, the stadium didn't exist, and the team wasn't winning. When you think about the run from there to now, and see what you have built, and I know the job isn't finished, but did you take, have you taken that moment to kind of go, like, wow, like, look, look at how special this is and what we have done already? Uh, to be completely honest, no. Uh, we we haven't because it's it's not done. Uh, yes, we we obviously we we won uh, a semi final last weekend and, and we got a trophy. We were we were pleased with that. I wouldn't say we were ecstatic. We were pleased with it, but but we have a goal to achieve and, and we're focused on that this weekend. That being said, we 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 don't really know the full ins and outs of what what was here before us. We've obviously heard stories of of where they were played and the fans and we have a lot of loyal fans that have been there from from out east uh, at the stadium. And and we feel like since we've moved into this building, things have trended in the right direction. I think the fans have been completely behind the team and, and, and that's what's most pleasing for us. Uh, but again, the, the job is far from finished. Yeah, only thing to really add is I think uh uh, to throw out a testament to the this, this staff and all the people that have been here, you know, the Widener group, the Reagans that have been here uh, for so long to, to put trust in guys like Chambo, Hoagie, um, to be able to bring us out here, try to build something special, especially with the downtown stadium. I mean, this stuff doesn't really happen overnight. As we see, we've been here personally, the two of us, four years now. And, you know, we're making our, our first USL final, making history in, in the Springs, you know, on its 10-year anniversary. Um, so yeah, it's it's nice to be to be grateful and to, to be grounded. And, you know, we talk about that a lot in terms of trying to stay humble in you know next match up. Uh, but like Chambo said, you know, hopefully after Saturday, after a win, we'll be able to think back on it more. For both of you, was there a moment, a practice, a point in a game somewhere where you saw, wait a minute, this team could be special? No, I wouldn't point to, to one particular moment because I, I think it takes a lot to get to this point. Uh, and, and I feel like you've got to consistently almost check off things like character, performances, the, the will to win. I know we've touched on that, but, but a lot of different things. And, and the more often you see them and the more frequent you see them, you're headed in the right direction. That doesn't mean it's going to always fall in your favour, but, but more often than not, if you do that, you give yourself the best possible chance of success. Yeah, getting to train with, with these guys every day, I think um, personally we knew what we had. We knew the ability that was in the locker room, the character that we had, and it was just about getting that first result so that we could build that confidence. And for me personally, the, the turning point started in Oakland away. You know, good, I think it was 2 nothing result on the road where we kind of jumped out of our season and went nine unbeaten since then um, at that point. Um, so we knew what we had, and it was more about finding our identity. You know, a lot of turnover happens throughout the years. Um, but I think that Oakland match, we saw what we could do, and then we're able to kind of build on that. You guys getting any sleep? Yes, sir. Coach, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so looking ahead to Saturday, um, what do you see out of this Rhode Island team? What is it going to take to pull off win? Yeah, they're, uh, they're a lot different to what we saw uh, before the summer, back in May, I believe. Uh, I, I feel like they've been, they've been really good in, in the playoffs, particularly scoring multiple goals. Uh, they've been a little bit more direct than probably what they've been in the past. Obviously, two big target men up top, whether it's Deegan and Williams or whether it's Fusion and, and Williams. Uh, and, and, and they've ultimately, they've, they've gone to Louisville, kept a clean sheet, conceded a free kick the other night in Charleston, but they've gone on the road in three consecutive games and beaten really good teams. So uh, as much as we're at home, uh, they're a diligent, diligent team, really, really strong, physical, and, and want to put themselves about. So we'll have our work cut out for us this weekend. Back to you, um, what is it going to be like in that USL Championship final, defending a guy like JJ Williams, who's had a hat trick in one quarterfinal match that he had a great two games ago. Just like from a personal standpoint, you're in that moment defending against him. What's that like for you? Yeah, challenging. Uh, we know we know what they provide. You know, he's a big body, physical physical player. Um, so I'll just try to do what you know what has gotten us to this point personally myself, and and try to make the players around me better. And we know if we defend collectively collectively as a group and, and work together, uh, it won't just be on me. And it'll be a, a group effort to try to stop players like him. Uh, so personally, I'll just try to go out and and, and do what I've done all year and, and try to put a good performance out. Um, with you guys having a job to finish on the title for the Springs, you obviously have guys on the team. Done this 
No, it's been massive, and I think that's why they're here. I mean, their experience has, has kind of led us to where we are right now. Uh, but it's interesting. You think some people think it's some magical potion, you know, that we have, but it's really just stick to the basics and and continue to do what, we, what we've done. Um, and that's what they've kind of been preaching. We don't need to change anything. We're here for a reason. So be confident, and then go out and you know give it our best shot. Have you guys played your best yet? I hear you talking about last week's game, Jango. It seems like you guys felt like you left a little something on the table. Have you have you played your best match yet? Do you think, or is that still to come on Saturday? Yeah, that, that's a good question. We won last week, so we didn't leave it on the table, <laughs> and and I, I mean that in in the most positive manner. I think it, at this stage of the season, look. You, You'd love it to look pretty and be effective and have a multiple goal game. Sometimes the game doesn't unfold like that. And that's why these players are, are, are different because the game didn't go how we had planned and how we had wished for it. But they ultimately found a way to win. We wanted more of the ball. We wanted to be more aggressive in the press. That didn't happen. Vegas had 70% of the ball, but we kept a clean sheet. <laughs> so that's why these players are, are different. Uh, and, and I think we we have had really really good 90 minute performances there's there's no doubt about that uh, i would put charleston up there probably a 60 minute performance tampa for the guts of 60 minutes uh, over the last number of weeks we've imposed different challenges with with oakland with orange county and then with vegas we've adapted to all of them uh, but but ultimately uh, performances do matter of course they do to give yourself the best possible chance to win a game but sometimes it's not about the performance it's about finding a way to win oh one player that stuck out has been Jairo Enrique. What, what he's given you off, you know, going towards goal, we've seen it since he's been here. But defensively, the way that he played, I mean, that that looked, from my standpoint, is one of his better two-way performances. Somebody like that, that you've changed his role a little bit, whether he's starting a match or coming on, talk about Jairo and, and what he's meant to this room. Yeah, the, the reality is, look, Hoyro has exceptional talent. He obviously scored in the first round here against Oakland and has produced moments of magic. The bicycle kick comes to comes to mind last season or two years ago, beg your pardon. So, so look, he, he has those moments, but the reality is he, he, he cares about the team. So that's why he does the defensive work. And, and that's ultimately what we want because, again, the game didn't plan out how we anticipated at the weekend. So, so we need players to be able to adapt and do what's needed in that moment. Not, not for us, for the team, and, and they did that. And ultimately, all the players are doing that, which is how you get more, more chance of success. Chang, was there a greater level of respect for uh, Rhode Island's coach? He's in kind of the same boat as you, first year head coach, headed to the final, Connor Smith. Uh, is there an inaugural season as a team? You talk to me about the respect level you have to yeah, I, I don't know him personally. Uh, I, I just met him here briefly before the, the game we played them earlier in the season. Heard a lot about him uh, from around the league. He's, he's coached uh, Orlando, obviously, and then at Birmingham. Has, has a really, really uh, high level from, from what I hear. Obviously, has a really good team that, that has managed to get to the final in, in their inaugural season. That says a lot. I, I know some of the staff in the background uh, and, and are terrific people. But yeah, like r really, really good guy by all accounts. Uh, would like to get to know him a little bit better. Maybe after the weekend we can do that. Uh, but yeah, just just a hell of a job. Are there any any unique challenges to the game starting at 10 a.m. versus you guys have these night games? Does that create any any, uh, any just different and change in your preparation? Or no, the, the game. I, I think I'm a person who, who's worked for a long time to try and be in the present. Uh, and, and right now, I'm, I'm in this moment, uh, and, and the game is at 10 o'clock. That's not going to change, so we'll be ready to go when 10 o'clock comes around.